How's it going, everybody? This is Dave Meltzer. We're going to be here for the next two hours talking pro wrestling, and we're going to be talking a little bit about Pride, which is kind of pro wrestling and kind of not. I don't know what it exactly is. Uh, I know what it sort of is, but anyway. Uh, we got Brian Alvarez here. We're actually going to have Joe Silva up uh, probably, hopefully, later in the show. It's not, I'm not exactly sure when in the show we're going to have him, but we'll be talking a little bit about the Pride show. Of course, we'll be talking about tonight's wrestling show. A little Got a little bit of a cold here, uh, but anyway. But no problem too much. Brian, how was your weekend? Uh, it's pretty good. That's good. I think I finally like, uh, I think I finally hit the wall this weekend with, uh, staying up all night for the Pride show and, uh, and just, just with all of this stuff with, uh, the WCW sale. The, um, um, tonight, of course, will be the final episode of Nitro, at least in its current form, on TNT. Uh, a show which may be called Nitro, may be called something else will debut on TNN. The time slot is not 100%. It'll be, uh, the, the, the time slots we heard was most likely Saturday night from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. A start date was not official as of yesterday. If they were trying to get the time slot official and the start date official so they could announce it at the end of the show tonight, uh, which would be very beneficial to, to have that. Um, and uh, that's really where it stands. What's your thoughts as far as everything that's going on this weekend? I guess we're going to start with the uh, whole Nitro thing. I mean, I figure um, everyone's going to talk about, you know, Saturday night at 11 o'clock, what a horrible time slot. But, you know, we've said it before, if it's a show that people want to watch and it's a good show, then they're going to tune in to see it. And, I mean, we've seen it's Monday going, nights it, when uh, Ross it, bumped to ungodly hours. It, it does a, you know, respectable number. So uh, I guess we'll see. It has to be a great show, though, at yeah. that time slot. Yeah. I mean, a C show, a C show at that time slot's not going to do a big number. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they've got to make sure that it's, you know, equivalent to a to rebuild that company name. It's got to be close to equal to the WWF. There's just so many weird things. I mean, about one of the things one. we also noticed was you remember every time that uh, Vince Russo was going to do his big comeback, and he got the word out and everything like that. And the first show always got that ratings bump, but then it turned out to be the same old, same old, and you know everybody stopped watching after that. If they can. Get the word out, promote this thing like crazy, and really do something on the first show and on the first, you know, several shows with uh, new guys over there, shows, not just like one. that. Yeah, it could it could do something. Um, if it's yeah, if it's a great show, if it's a great new type of show, I mean, one advantage of that late night time slot is that you probably can get away with a lot more. Yeah. The, the disadvantage of that late night time slot is the newer, younger viewer that WCW that was never getting. Is not going to watch at that hour because they're not going to be up from 11 to 1 on Saturday night. I mean, as far as the, you know, 15 and under crowd yeah. that WCW was so weak with, and the crowd that WCW had maintained its strength with, which would be the 40 and over crowd, um, a lot of them aren't going to be what move into that show either, unless it has more WCW, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, more WCW representatives of the glory days than this current roster has. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, because they're not going to watch WCW to, sh- to see Shannon Moore and to see people like that that they are retaining, and or even Booker T for that matter. Um, they're going to have to have a lot of the old names, and I just don't know how many of those old names the WWF is going to want to sign. Yeah. I think it'll be uh, different enough that at least at the beginning it's going to do okay, and I guess it depends on, uh, you know, like you said earlier, if it's a C show, it will die. And uh, if they really... They really try and make it a big deal, like an A show, and um, I guess Shane McMahon jumping over it's a good start because, you know, they're going to consider him like one of the top guys in the company. If he cares enough to uh, jump over to WCW, I think a lot of it's going to depend on the promo he cuts tonight. And uh, I guess the promo, I, I, I'm assuming the promo he cuts tonight is going to be strong. But the, what's going to depend well, on? Well, I mean, what are you going to well, say? You know, as how, far as how well they how well they follow it up, you know, afterwards, and how much time they give it. And you got to remember also this. And acquiring this thing is added expense um, at a time when, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, just from everything that I read today, I really don't believe the XFL is going to be around next season. No, no. And so that is a big expense that will be off the books next year that they're going to be well, off, off the books after April, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, so that's one thing. If they had had both the WCW, uh, you know, startup costs and the XFL losses to deal with, you know, that all of a sudden that big profit isn't so big anymore. I mean, yeah. just with the XFL, it isn't so big anymore. Um, Dick Ebersole actually in the Washington Post today for the first time uh, pretty much said that uh, it's not going to be on NBC, barring a big turnaround during the playoffs. Uh, 
that NBC is committed to it, but they have to they have to uh, was it satisfy their advertisers too. And what so do they consider a big turnaround? A one nine? <laughs> I think it's going to have to be a lot bigger than that. I think probably uh, I think the playoffs are going to have to do at least in the threes, which they won't do. There's no way. No, no. Um, the show on uh, Saturday night did a 2.0 on the overnights, which was exactly what the show the week before did, which ended up being the lowest rated show in the history of television and one of the big four networks in prime time. And this week will probably be along the same lines. Next week will probably be lower, going against the uh, going against the NCAA semifinals head to head for three hours. I'll tell you the one thing that that Saturday night did was whatever excuses were given for last week. <laughs> We're out the window this week, and the number stayed rough, almost the same. Um, in fact, exactly the same on the overnights. Um, last week's big excuse was um, they went against basketball, and this week they did go against basketball for one hour, but then they had two hours where they didn't go against basketball, and the rating was barely better. So it wasn't basketball. Don't forget St. Patrick's Day. I, no, come on, forget it. <laughs> don't, don't even consider that one, okay? Uh uh, let's see what else. WWE sold out the garden. We're going to go to Joe Silva right now. Joe Silva was in uh, Saitama, Japan on Sunday and was at the Pride Show. Joe, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing really well. Hey, how was the trip? Oh, it was great. It's my first time in Japan. I had a lot of fun. Um, what What was your thoughts as far as um, the show? I mean, the big thing on the show was the you know big upset night. And um, how do you think the new rules? Played a part in in it, or or did they at all? And what are your um, thoughts of the new rules of the new rules for Pride, as far as like the kneeing and the kicking on the ground? Well, yeah, the kneeing on the ground changed everything. Uh, you know, a lot of matches would have gone different uh, without it. Uh, every time you change the rules, you change the fight. Yeah, you think it was too brutal? Uh, you know, it, the, the brutality thing is a hard thing. It, in our sport, you know, we had very, very open rules at one time. And the fact of the matter was, it still always proved to be safe. Mm-hmm. We've never really had anybody hurt from knees on the ground. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of pressure for us from athletic commissions and things like that to, you know, alter the rules till that they believe it's safe. And that's the only way that we're going to get... Uh, back on TV, so we've done that, but, uh, you know, it's the same thing that if they want heavier gloves or things like that, sometimes there's things they ask for, and it's not necessarily that they're safer, but in their minds it is. So if it was too brutal, I don't know. But I will say this, a lot of fighters who I talked to after the show said that uh, they don't like the knees on the ground. I was very surprised. Peter Belfort was very vocal about it, Trey Telegman, uh, some of the people. They Their thoughts were that it takes less skill. Yeah. You know, Trey said he was a big advocate of no rules at one time, but he's like, I don't know what I was thinking then. You know, this is a sport, and we are athletes, and and we need to present it as a sport. So it's actually surprised me. But I I think under those rules, the wrestlers evolved in this show, and I think you're going to see a very, as long as the knees on the ground are allowed, that's going to be the new technique, is simply the sprawl and brawl. You know, mm-hmm. if, they, if they got heavier hands and the guy is forced to shoot on them and they're not good at shooting, they're going to sprawl down, and when they flatten them out, they're going to knee them in the oblivion. You know, I don't think it would be such a big deal if, like, the guys were the same weight, but when it's, like, a situation where one guy is really big or a lot bigger than the other guy, you know, it's well, like... Well, that's what we I like so much about, you know, having the weight classes and all, is you take away those kind of things. Uh, there were some excellent matches. There were some matches, you know... Booking-wise, their philosophy is, you know, certainly very different than ours. Um, you know, I don't like having guys of unequal weight, and, and with our show, that doesn't happen. You know, we're not supposed to happen uh, because of our weight classes. But yeah, I don't, didn't think Alon Goez should have been in there with uh, Mark Coleman. They actually didn't have that big of a weight differential though on the night of the fight. The thing is, though, you know, I could be a 200 pounder. You know, what? I'm like five four, but I shouldn't be. Yeah, I mean, there's people, anybody can put on weight, but you go, is that really the natural weight that they should be at? Henzo should be a lightweight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but he had talked to me before this, uh, you know, no, I want to beat middleweights and I want to go up to heavyweight. Well, you that's know, some, stupid. You know, some people, and... I told him, like, dude, you know, we'll give you 
uh, a shot in the UFC is lightweight, you know, title because he's, he's an excellent fighter. But gone are the days where you can give up that kind of weight when you're taking on skilled fighters. What do you think he was giving up with? Because uh, he could have been giving up. 20 pounds to uh, Dan Henderson. Yeah, originally he told me that he was coming in at 190, but then I heard he just really started training like a madman and dropped a ton of weight. He, mm. he did not look big at all. So, I mean, he could have been, you know, you know, you know, 170. Yeah. Maybe what, small. What? Did you have any thoughts on as far as what you thought the best fight of the show was? Um, I have a thought on what was the worst fight of the show. You sued in Sasaki, right? Yeah, that yeah was, that's what everyone said. That was pretty horrible, and that's to some people. To me, you know, because everybody's looking, you know, what's going to be the work in the show. I honestly don't believe that was the work. They just no. Did, there's no way they would have done it that way. It no. was it was so incredibly boring. Um, it was just him pushing Sasaki into the corner, and that was it. You know, over and over again, the fans were booing it. Plus, I don't think if uh, someone was going to be sent in there to do work, they'd go the distance. You know? the, the thing is, the one piece of logic that some people were trying to say was, because of a lot of kind of mismatched matches early, uh, the, the fights were going incredibly fast. Uh -huh. So people are like, oh, they need a one to take up time because everything is going so quick. But I still, I really don't think no, they would no, do but, it that way. But... And there was nothing that looked... You know, there was no holes in it or anything. It was simply, you know, a guy just bull rushing Sataki. I, I had, would have to believe they'd give Sataki more offense. Well, the other thing also is if you do a work, you know, you're, you're going to do back and forth. Mm -hmm. And the other aspect of it is that I've seen Sataki in questionable fights before. Right. And they weren't that bad. Oh, yeah. And, and Yasuda's a pro wrestler, so even though he'd have to modify his style, a pro wrestler can do that work shoot thing. You know, rather than just stand in the corner and like kind of like smother him in the ropes where he can't do anything for 20 minutes. Yeah, no, it was not. You know, there was nothing. He didn't. I think he got off maybe one kick. You know, mm -hmm. and that was it. He really did not get much good offense at all. Uh, it did. There's just. I really don't believe it was. I believe everything in this show was on the level. Um, you know, and it's just interesting, but it's just it's some. You know, listen, the matchmaking is interesting. This, the, you know, but one thing they have to be commended for too. You know, if they're protecting people, which a lot of organizations will do, you you like to nurture stars and have people do well. The Vanderlei Silva match really didn't seem to make much sense. No, it's um, too too big a risk for for no reward. Exactly, the payoff. There's too much not downside, and no enough. upside, and and then they ended up getting burned by it because as a matter, you know. Well, it also looked like they. I don't know for sure. But they did a Hickson piece before that fight. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they thought they were going to get it and then he was going to beat Silva and have that match or what, but Hicks, there was a Hickson video piece on the show. Hmm. I have to say live, the show looked spectacular. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just it's a beautiful arena. And, I heard. Uh, this, I heard. I heard. That. Now, was, was the building totally sold out? Because I heard like it wasn't and I heard that then an announced crowd that it wasn't. It wasn't. I mean, there was a big crowd, though. It, it wasn't sold out, but not by much. It was just like the very top seats. Okay. So close to 27,000, or what did they announce, like 20,008 or something? They announced 20,006, and then I talked to some people that were there live who tried to tell me that it was actually 27,000. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was very close to capacity, but like I said at the very top seats, there was some empties. But, you know, it was a very good crowd. Uh, so the entrances are very good. The Heat Herring one looked like something right out of pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. He's got, you know, him and all his crew had on, like, uh, big trench coats and cowboy hats and everything all in black. They look like the what, new Blackjacks or something. What, uh, what, what, if any, what, what do you think this means as far as to Sakuraba, as far as as a draw? Because obviously he was the big draw on this show. I think it's a very big rematch for them. You know, he's been on such a streak, such a win, and, and he went down like a warrior. He actually, they did not stop that fight soon enough. He was ugly. I think that's what freaked some of the fighters out is that he, you know, he took punishment. Uh, but the, the, the worst thing that probably happened for him is he did like what everybody does with Silva is he actually dropped Silva at one point and it probably, you know, he, you know, he did. He wanted to take the fight down to the ground, but I think he was willing to trade more because he got him. Silva goes down like almost every fight, but he's like Felix Trinidad. He always gets back up. 
you know, and fights even harder. Um, but on the ground, you know, Sakuraba was very hurt. He was taking knees and kicks to the head, and I thought that went on a little long. The Coleman one definitely went on too long. Mm -hmm. Alon Goaz was out from maybe the first knee that he took, and he took at least three more. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, he was out, but so then he you, woke you, up so and attacked say... Coleman, sort of. It, it was reminiscent of uh, Vitor Belfort against Scott Ferrozo, how it's like, okay, it's over, oh, yeah, and you yeah, yeah. get up and you turn away, and all of a sudden you're being attacked again. Hmm. Or um, or when, uh, what was it, uh, Owen Taktarov and Hensel Gracie. Right. You know where he Except that took him longer to get up. <laughs> yeah, he didn't even know he was knocked out, and he got yeah. up and he thought the fight was still going on. Yeah, that's what Alon did totally. He uh, he did he thought the fight was still continuing, but he was really not senseless. The the Gracie, uh, the Henzo and Henderson said it was interesting too. That was that I mean that was a pretty good stoppage. It's like he got sprawled on, and it, it was hard to tell, but it looked almost like when he got sprawled on top of that, his head might have hit his own knee. I mean, he really got crushed down, but then Henderson hit him with a shot afterwards, like right on top of the head, and then like a hook after it, and then he was out. What did you think about the whole Inoki deal? Oh, my God. That was the thing that was really interesting to me was, I mean, I know, this is my first time in Japan and all, and I know Inoki's reputation and all, but it's it, if you're not there live to experience, you just cannot believe how over that man is. Yeah, I mean, people think about The Rock, and it's like it's not the same thing. You know, this guy, they worship this guy. Yeah. They are hanging on his every word, you know, screaming and yelling and chanting, and it was amazing. He, nobody got close to the pot that he did. Well, you know, the thing when the Noki comes out is like, you know, you know, especially because they do this usually, like, right at the intermission, and you see people sprinting back into the arena when they understand that Noki's about to come out. Yep. No, it was huge. Uh, they they reacted to him so much. I wish I could understand everything that he was saying because everything he said, you know, the crowd was laughing and reacting well to it. And you know, I think people that speak Japanese didn't understand everything he was saying. I don't understand what I don't understand it, and I'm a wrestling fan. I don't understand what he was doing. I mean, I mean, he brought out two pro wrestling belts, and he gave one to Fujita and gave one to Mark Coleman. Was that was very strange. Belts. Yeah, there was a lot of pro wrestling style angles. Um, yeah, like the the. But but no, I heard they they set up um you know Kendo Caution and uh and Hein Gracie again. And it's like you know didn't they learn from the first one? Yep. Well, they figure I guess they figure it can't get any worse. Yeah, but he, they killed the kid's career the first time. I mean, it's not gonna unless he wins, it's not gonna help him any. Plus the thing is, I mean, he probably in his mind thinks I got caught. It was a fluke. I was not prepared, and I'll do better this time because he couldn't do worse this time. Well, he may do better, but I don't know. Well, I don't know what good that's gonna do. Oh, well, it's the thing. Look at Takata. You know, he got smoked by Hicks in the first time. He still took him on a second time. Yeah, that was different. That was like huge money. And you know, Takata, you know, was all about money. You know what I mean? That was a big money draw fight. This is just something where, you know, I don't know, just this. Plus, this he had a guy, guy who, kind of on a tail end of his career. It's not like. Uh, yeah, like a, like a thirty-year-old guy. Yeah. I don't think he probably, you know, it's probably an ego thing. He feels like, you know, what I could make a better showing. I want to make a better showing. I got embarrassed. I want to atone for it. Yeah. But, any, uh, what, any other thoughts as far as uh, the show went? Um, any, any, things, any things you felt like uh, you learned from watching the show? Are you, are you, you know, as far as like uh, ideas and stuff like that? Um, I said I liked a lot of the production, but a lot of it also I, I think works better for Japan. I mean, I like Japanese stuff, so it appeals to me, but as far as the American public, I don't know. And a lot of it's time stuff. A lot of like where they had all the fighters come out at the beginning, you know, and they introduce everybody. It's very cool to see it, but it's like in our show, it's like, wow, that would be a big thing to take up time that would stop you from having more fights. No, that wouldn't work in the United States. That's total Japanese ceremony. Exactly. It's cool to watch uh, for Japan, but I, I don't think it would apply to America. Um, but no, I, I mean they were great, uh, you know, and it was it was a fun show. But you know, like I said, I, some of the matches. It's, you know, and it's not even a critical thing. It's a different kind of thing, but our approach is so different in that we have champions, we have weight classes, we try to have some sort of logical build. Right now, Pride just puts on a lot of fights that are interesting. Um, oh, the one thing I would say, too, probably the best fight in a lot of ways would be uh, Igor Vovchanchin and uh, Trey Helligman. What was your thoughts on that? 
Uh, that was, it was, that was know, a huge upset. Yeah, it was uh, surprising, uh, especially because, you know, a lot of people get hit by Eager and go down. And he, he rocked Trey, but Trey dealt with it and then just came back. Did Silva just get tired, or uh, Volchance just get tired? Um, well, even early on, he wasn't having a lot of success. It wasn't like he was doing great and then he got tired and then started losing. He was not really doing great right off the bat because he had a guy who had somewhat of a chin and could take his punch, and he is really very short to fight in the heavyweight division. Mm-hmm. I mean, he gives up a lot of reach. You could tell he hits very hard, but he's given up a lot of reach, and if you have somebody who can take the punch... It's difficult, and like he ended up, you know, Trey took him down nicely, and then Trey's working his guard a lot, and just he has nothing from the guard. Trey had to worry, didn't have to worry about submissions at all. I also want to make mention real quick that that we have a, we had a. This is not confirmed, but right before we went on the air, we did hear that Scott Steiner was in Panama City because uh, he arrived late, and there was there was definitely concern about that. Um, Joe, I want to ask you, you know, having to do with, with pro wrestling, you know, the biggest. Obviously, you know about, because uh, we've already talked about it, WCW being bought by the WWF. But mm-hmm. to me, the biggest story in a roundabout way, mm-hmm. um, having to do with the future of pro wrestling from all this, not just that one guy is going to own the whole thing, but the lack of interest in the major cable networks in pro wrestling at this time, which is which is basically why one person's got it, because nobody else nobody else wanted it, or else the, the deal would have gone elsewhere. What does, as far as your thing goes... You know, there's a lot of people, everyone in the world's going like, well, who's going to be number two? Because there is no number two right now. Mm-hmm. And and really, number two is the first guy who gets strong national television. And you guys, the one thing that you guys have is a totally different product. What's your thoughts as far as, you know, p- plans and, and things like that and how this affects? I don't know if this directly affects you, but indirectly, I think it does. Oh, I think it does. And uh, the thing is that uh, the big part is getting back on cable, and we're working on that. And there, there's a lot of... Uh, positive looking things in that direction. And the fact of the matter is when we were on cable at our height, we were huge and the people who were running it had no clue what they were doing. Um, they just kind of lucked into it. They lucked uh, into a good product, yeah. Yeah, no, I think the, the people, Zufa, knows far more about how to, I think, you know, on our last show we did that basically on three weeks notice. We made the changes and people were saying, you know, it's the best show in years. And we had very little time to do that. They understand a lot of concepts that the old group didn't, mainly being that you need to create stars, you need to push personalities, you need to get across storylines, and you need to put on the best, most competitive fights. That's the biggest difference you're going to see in UFC now is it's not going to be name guy versus tomato can guy. It's all going to be, you know, guys who deserve to be in the big show, all, you know, proven commodities not just people walking off the street into the main draw anymore. Now, what, what, as far as your relationship with Pride, would there be a chance that, say, a Sakuraba or somebody that's on a Pride show, Mark Coleman, could fight for you guys, or is it, is it just one of those things where politically that's not going to happen? Uh, well, that's one of the things that I love uh, about working with these guys, one of the better ones, is they don't take an adversarial slant to it. We went to Pride, and they enjoyed Pride. Uh, they're fans of the sport as a whole, and we, as you saw on our last show, we were not afraid to say when we talk about who the best fighters in, in the world are in a weight division, we listed people who weren't even in our show and maybe never will be. But they're all about legitimacy. They're all about, you know, this sport as a whole. Before, the UFC would act like no other organizations existed. Sometimes we would have somebody come into our show who had great accolades from another show and they wouldn't even bring it up. Well, like Dan Severin holding the, what was it, the uh, that belt that he held when he fought Pedro Hizzo? Right. You know, of yeah, course, they were the, the NWA champion, but... Well, that's a different thing. <laughs> the, uh, but, yeah, that's, that's completely in the past. So it, as far as what will happen for sure in the future, I don't know, but I do know that these guys are willing to listen and work with anybody and work to help the sport as a whole. They feel competition is a good thing and a healthy thing, uh, you know, and they don't look at it so much as, a, you know, it's, it's us versus them and, and get them at any cost. We feel confident in our product, and if we put out the best product we can, that we, we can stand with anybody. Now, what is, what right now on May the 4th in Atlantic City, what 
do you have confirmed so far? Um, it's still, you know, the, this, there's some difficulties are simply in that the last show was so good um, that people, one, are thinking that, oh, they, they made a million dollars in the last show because it looks so good and they don't realize, now we're still not back on cable and we pumped a lot more money into it without bringing more money in. So a lot of demands have gotten higher, a lot more stuff needs to work out. Plus, we're dealing with the way that business used to be done, where fighters are used to, oh, we don't have to sign a contract till a week before the show. And we were looking to change that, but it's an education process. Plus, we're overcoming, you know, that um, sometimes fighters and managers dealt with companies and they didn't treat them right or whatever, so there's a big suspicion. You know, everybody's like, oh, you're trying to lock me up into this or that. So it, it's just a process, um, but I think we're going to earn everybody's trust. I think nobody's going to treat the fighters better than Zufa does. And uh, I think once we get over this first show where we're 100% in control of it, that it will get easier from here on out. But at the moment, uh, we're still waiting on contracts to come by. We're trying to get those taken care of, you know, hopefully by the end of this week. So okay. is there any relationship between UFC and uh, UFC Japan, or is that pretty much dead? That's dead. Okay. There's no relationship. Now, are you looking at doing something in Japan, though? I mean, yeah, it's, it's a great market, you know, as to exactly what it will be or, or when that time frame will happen, you know, I can't say. Um, but a lot of different ideas are being looked at. But uh, so we, we love Japan, and the Japanese have a great appreciation for this sport. And, you know, I think it just makes sense that uh, sooner or later we're going to do something in Japan. Okay, Joe, I want to thank you very much for uh, doing the show today. Yep. And, Take it uh, easy, guys. We'll be, we'll be talking to you soon, and good luck with the UFC. Later. Okay. That was uh, Joe Sobel with the UFC. He was talking about the Pride Show, which took place on Sunday in Saitama, Japan, and it was the night of upsets with Vanderlei Silva beating Kazushi Sakuraba in a minute 38, and uh, Trey Teligman upsetting Igor Bovchanchin. That was... One of the bigger upsets in the history of mixed martial arts, the number two heavyweight in the world losing. Although the way they matched up, it's, it's still a big upset. Um, Dan Henderson knocking out Henzo Gracie the first time Henzo Gracie's ever been knocked out in competition. And that was very quick, like a minute 40. And uh, Tadao Yasuda of New Japan beating Masake Satake, which was probably the single most boring match, but also probably the biggest upset in the history of mixed martial arts because you had a guy who's a veteran of this sport, uh, an accomplished kickboxer going against a guy who has been a pro wrestler who's well over 300 pounds, uh, 37 years old, never having done this. And even though uh, the fight was horrible, he actually got a split decision out of out of the fight. That's mm -hmm. so. Anyway, uh, that was the main stuff there. We're going to talk more about uh, WCW. Brian, anything else you want to talk about regarding uh, tonight's television or anything? Tonight's television, as far as Ron Nitro. Yeah, I just want to. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see. What uh, Shane McMahon says, because I'm just, it's like they have this situation where they, they own both companies, and they, they're going to want to start a war of some sort, and it kind of means you sort of have to bury the competition in what you say, but that's really not what you want to do as far as uh, keeping another, I mean, if Shane goes out there and goes, you know, Dad, um, uh, I bought this horrible... <laughs> Terrible yeah, company, but I'm going to bring you know, it back. This thing was dying, and I want to recreate it or whatever. Or is he going to come out there and say, look, Dad, look at what you're doing to your company. You're out there on national TV with this girl telling her to bark like a dog. It's just horrible, and I'm going to take this company here, and we're going to crush you. You know, what's he going to say? What's he going to say that's not going to bury one or the other? Well, we'll find out. That's going to be the most interesting thing about uh, about the TV tonight, I think. Um, now, now that it's been several days and a lot of the talent stuff is starting to shake out um, as far as who they're going to keep, what the details are and everything, uh, what's your thoughts as far as, because I mean the one thing when I look at that list of guys that they're, that they're keeping and the guys that they want, when I look at that list by itself, it's like, you know, there's a lot of good wrestlers there, but there is no main events there. Yeah. I think they're just going to do the, um, I mean, if they want to make WCW right off the bat look strong, they need to get some of their top guys going over there, and probably one of the, you know, they'll get uh, Shane McMahon over there, obviously. I think a good guy maybe would be Kurt Angle, because, you know, he's he's a guy that could be a main eventer, but the position he's in now in the WWF, they don't really consider him a main eventer, and maybe someone like Benoit, just guys like that going over there to, uh, 
They need a top guy so that fans think, you know, if this top, if this guy who is at the top of the WWF is willing to come over here, you know, this must be something big. If they have a bunch of guys like Test going over there, it'll be B Show right off the bat. Okay, now here's the thing when we're talking about that though. Uh, number one, the guys who go over there are not going to be wrestling on the road, which means that you really don't want young guys that need ring time out there. Which is funny because that's all the guys the WCW has. And the other the net, the other thing is is that I think I think that it should be maybe Helmsley and Undertaker over there. Although Undertaker and, for and, sure because he doesn't need. And to the, the reason I say that is because I think that. If if Benoit and Angle are to go over there and they'll be immediately become the top two guys in that company, it's kind of like, well, those guys were almost good enough to be on top in the WWF, and now when they go to WCW, they're the, by far the two top guys. I think it'd be better if it's a guy who already is a top guy. That way, Benoit and Angle become top guys because of the omission of two top guys, so they're forced in the main events in, in in one company. Whereas Hunter, you know, Hunter's already established as a top guy, and if he goes over there, you know, him being a top guy doesn't make everybody else look bush league. And make the company look weak, whereas, say, Benoit going over there and being the number one guy in the company, they're going like, well, golly, you know, he was number six in WWF. He goes over there and he's number one. What does that say about them? Yeah. You know what I would say in the short term, but, um, you know, it probably wouldn't work out any longer than that, is if they sent Rock over there. I mean, he's doing the movie. He probably will only be able to do TV tapings. You know what? He can't that's go on the road. That's pro Yeah, you know what? But then that what happens when the, uh, when the movie's done filming? Well, there's always ways to shoot around that. You know what? That's probably the best idea of all. Because you're right, he can't go on the road, so it's not like they're losing someone who can go on the road. And there's no question that he's a top guy, and no matter where he goes, he's going to be number one. Uh, I like that. I like that. Not that it's going to happen, because it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and it's probably better than what's going to. But anyway, uh, we'll, we'll start seeing the stuff tonight, and hopefully we'll know uh, when the TV is, and we'll have a lot more answers in, over the next couple of days. We'll start hitting some emails before we start getting to the phone calls. Uh, it's from Eric, who goes with all the names, WCW names being mentioned this week. There's one I haven't heard, Chris Canyon. I would suspect that Chris Canyon, the deal with Chris Canyon is, is his contract was very high with, w, with WCW, and they didn't want to buy a contract at a high rate, but I think that Chris Canyon will, I, I have little doubt Chris Canyon will get the opportunity to work for WWF at the price they dictate, which yes. is a very key point. Same with all those guys. Guys, I have Alex Morvez on the line. He's got a little bit of breaking news, okay? Okay. Alex, what's going on? Dave, how are you? I'm doing good. Brian. Great. Hey, good. Hey, it looks like Saturday night is going to be the night for uh, WWF on TNN. 11 to 1? 11 to 1. I'm not sure if they're going to announce it tonight, but that is pretty much the deal that, that has been struck. Okay. If it's uh, confirmed, I think they'll probably announce it. Um, if they can get everything, you know, eyes crossed, uh, T's yeah. dotted, whatever. Did they announce like a start date? No, no start date yet that I know of, but they may have one. Um, I still think they're trying to finalize all the details, but it is it is pretty much a go that it will be Saturday night. Hmm. Okay. Do not be surprised if that they go heavily after the Saturday Night Live demographic, um, maybe even resorting to the point of saying that Lorne Michaels was a guy who took away your XFL football or whatever. Oh, well, that's good <laughs> for ten people. Well, <laughs> you know, they've got to blame I wouldn't, I wouldn't even want to. I wouldn't even want to bring any of that up. Well, I wouldn't either. But they, you know, again, they got to blame somebody. And right now, the guy, you know, they're looking for some scapegoats. You may as well blame Lorne Michaels, right? Well, he did. He did cut like forty-seven seconds off of that game the other night. Yeah, you know, I heard they, about they, that. They were so spooked. They were so spooked. They wouldn't show the finish of the game Saturday night. Yeah, that they cut off the finish of the game. Interestingly, and this is on a separate note, I'm out here at the NFL owners' meetings. The NFL next year for their late season Saturday games and their playoff games are going to move the start time so that the games end up in prime time. I don't really? know if that has anything to do with the XFL or not, but maybe a final slap in the face. <laughs> yeah, the, the ultimate coup de gras, right? So just, that's, just, that's just, what I'm hearing, just, guys. I just want to let you know it's up on the website. So I got to get back to work on my other day job. Okay, thanks very much, Alex. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. Okay, we'll go for about another minute here, and then we will start. But we'll go to another break. See what the future. What's the future of WCW pay per views? Do they have some sort of a contract with the pay per view companies? They did. That contract has not been picked up by the WWF. So right now there are no pay per views on the schedule. There will be pay per views when the WWF deems that they can do pay per views. You know, and and, and, and and there's there's no. When, when it comes to any of this stuff, like house shows, pay-per-views, there is nothing close to a plan. They're going to roll out that TV, and when they see, feel it's hot and feel they can do it, then they'll make a try. But it's not like six months, a year. It may never happen. It may happen in three months. So that's uh, the deal there. This says, I can't believe the overwhelming response of fools who are voting that the WWF purchase is good for wrestling. Oh, it's not good for wrestling. 
I don't want to say fools, but it's not good for wrestling. There's no way. Uh, oh, it's, it's, uh, it's something on the WCW website. What do you expect? What do you expect? I mean, that, that's an unsophisticated group of fans. Um, oh. I know it is. Hey, it is. <laughs> hey, God. That's, the, that's the reality of it. I mean, they don't, you know, people don't realize that wrestlers are going to be pushed around. It's not right, especially for people like me looking to get into the business. There's basically a no a no way stance right now, if you know what I mean. Hello. And I see who that person is who does not want his name recognized, but he is a relatively known wrestler um, who is probably out of work. I shouldn't laugh about that because that's really sad. Uh, will Eric Bischoff still be at the Nitro family? I, I'm almost sure he will not be there tonight. No. Uh, let's see. What is this? Uh, gimmick Battle Royal. I don't want to think about the Gimmick Battle Royal right at this minute. Uh, let's I see. am appalled at the amount of feedback we got about that thing, by the way. Why? It's, just, it's, it's going to be seven minutes of comedy. I don't mind seeing Michael Hayes. The thing, you know, the thing is, is that, that to a very vocal segment of the audience, because clearly in the building it wasn't that big of a deal, but to a vocal segment of the audience, the Honky Tonk Man cameo at the Royal Rumble was really fun, and, and I and I put myself in that category. I thought it was really fun. Mm -hmm. So now they're going to give us, you know, seventeen of them, and you know what? It's like it won't be that much fun. <laughs> Why is Honky on that list, by the way? Did he burn his bridges last time? Yeah, I don't know. This is from someone who goes, I'm emailing you from Australia telling you that uh, I listen to the show every day, love every minute for it, uh, love every minute of it, for what it's worth. Here are my top ten interviews. Number one, Tom Zink, number two. I think if we did a balloting, that would be the number one. Number two is Tom Zink, number three. Number three, Honky Tonk Man. I'm very surprised that's that high. Not that he wasn't, he was very good, though, but that, that surprised me. Number four, Bobby Heenan. Bobby Heenan was very good that one time we had him on. Number five, Tom Zink, number one. God, Tom Zink fan. Although... I know, Tom Singh's very good on this show. Six, Lance Russell. Yeah, Lance Russell's great on this show. Seven, Steve Kern. Yeah, I loved the Steve Kern interview. Eight, Jim Cornette, the most recent one. All the Cornette ones are good. Nine, Rico Constantino, which is a surprise because we just had him on the other day. And um, I thought he did very well, but, I mean, it was like this day where there was so much news that we didn't really get to talk to him as much as, as we normally do to a guest. But he was, he was good. Number 10, Missy Hyatt. I'm going to quickly go through our weekend poll, which was, how would you react to the news that WWF has purchased WCW? It's good news for fans and wrestlers, 16%. Good news for fans, bad for wrestlers, 35%. Now, I'll tell you what. Now, the good news for wrestlers, there's no way. You can make an argument it's good news for fans. There's no way this is good news for wrestlers, okay? Uh, bad news for fans and wrestlers, 12%. Some short-term good, but bad long-term for everyone, 36%. Bad short-term, but a good long, but good long-term, 1%. Today's question, which is a similar topic, how long do you think WCW would be kept as a separate entity before being absorbed into the WWF? A, less than three months. B, three to six months. C, six months to a year. D, one to two years. And E, more than two years. Uh, you know, as far as bad news for the wrestlers, um, I mean, financially, obviously it is, but I think there are some guys that are going to be happy that at least now they're going to get a chance in a company that has a clue. Yeah, but there's not going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of guys that are out of work. Yeah. And it's going to be bad financial. You're right. You're right, though. There, there are guys where. I mean, in chance. general, it's bad. But for some guys, I'm sure that uh, this is a happy there, day in their lives. Yeah, there will be some guys who benefit from this. You're right. Hopefully, unless it's just gutted. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, like, in, like in a year. Mm -hmm. In which case, you know, maybe like they'll they'll keep five to eight guys. I don't know. I've just seen. I'm so negative about this because I've seen this in in not just wrestling, but in other forms of sports entertainment when something like this has happened, and it's happened many, many times. In the long run, it's never been good. Um, whether it was the role, what happened when Roller Derby folded in Roller Games, which was a total disaster and killed everything within about a year after it happened, or with just is the most recent pro wrestling thing with the Mid South, when Jim Crockett took over, actually took over Florida, he took over Central States, he took over Mid South, and in every case, uh, they never did anything in a promotional, and they ended up not using any of the, allowing any of the outside talent to get over because it would. Threaten the guys, or they're still, they were still fighting a fight that they'd already won. You know, like, there was always that rivalry. Yeah. Of which group, with Jim Crockett and Bill Watts, when they were running at the same time, which group was really the good wrestling group? Because WF was obviously the, more the entertainment oriented group. And, and there's a lot of things. So when they finally, when Bill Watts sold to Jim Crockett, it was all those guys that were fighting. And the first thing that they did on, on mixed shows was put all the mid, all the UWF guys in the middle and low part of the card, and all the NWA guys in the top of the card, and they put, Jim Crockett guys ended up winning all the UWF titles right away, uh, which basically killed those titles as being competitive titles. I mean, you know, they had Big Bubba Rogers, who was a mid-card um, 
mid-card gimmick guy for Jim Crockett go over and win the uh, UWF world title right away. I mean, that was totally done wrong. When they finally did, they were going to do the beginning of the unification matches. The first one was Nikita Koloff and Terry Taylor for, I think they unified the two TV titles, as I recall. Or there were two, they, I think that's what it was, actually, at a Starcade. And it was like this squash match, you know, where Terry Taylor got no offense, and Nikita just killed him. And it was like, well, that's just a great way to start a promotion feud. And then they never even bothered with the other belts. And as I recall, Steve Williams ended up selling that UWF belt uh, so he could get, like, um, what was it, like 50-yard line tickets to a football game or something. That's how much it meant to him by <laughs> the time it was all over. So, so anyway, I wonder who's got that belt now. This is a question. Uh, what was the biggest wrestling news story of the last 25 years? This is 15 different ones. Number one, WWF buys WCW, which is certainly one of them. Uh, WCW starts Nitro was a big one. Vince screws Bret Hart. That'd be in the 15. Vince declares war on the territories. That may be number one or two. I think this one and that one are probably the two biggest. Uh, Vince McMahon steroid trial, very high. All Japan split, very high. NWO, WCW feud. Uh, not as high as the other ones we mentioned. Mm -hmm. Kira Maeda starts UWF. I think long term that one's pretty damn high. Uh, just because of how much it changed the entire industry. Nine, Rise of AAA, which would be probably the biggest one in Mexico, because it changed the whole, it changed Mexico huge. Number 10, Ricky Choshu attacks Anoki. That was 1982. Well, yeah, because it, it did change the, uh, the the structure of the main events in Japan from, um, you know, you know, Americans versus Japanese to Japanese versus Japanese at the big box office. And it really did make, it was the beginning of the idea when um, Americans became far less important to the Japanese wrestling. That's a big one. 11, Hogan jumps to WCW. I think Hogan jumping to WWF was maybe big, was bigger than Hogan jumping to WCW, actually. But they were both big. Number 12, Ted Turner buys NWA, which was or Jim Crockett promotions. And that was huge. 13, Jim Crockett buys UWF. Uh, as we just talked about, that could have been huge, but I don't think it really was. 14, Death of Owen Hart. 15, Death of Bruiser Brody. So those are some of them right there. It's from Chris Russell, who goes, I'm from Coleman, Alabama. I was listening to a Christian radio station this morning out of Birmingham. They said they were going to have Tim Berryman, the uh, Birmingham Thunderbolts general manager, on. Uh, he's trying to target the Christian community to raise the ratings and get families to come out to XFL games. And said they were going to change their product to a family-friendly product instead of the adult-style product they have now. Boy, they're desperate, huh? <laughs> Look at all these changes, like, in the first season. That's what's so yeah. funny. Yeah. It's like every week, well, this week let's try uh, family entertainment. Next week we'll try uh, Cameron in the locker room. Of course, Derek Sands. This is gonna, uh, you know, this is from Derek Sands who goes. I have a couple questions. Does Antonio Inoki know, own Pride? He does not own Pride, but he's the. Um, I guess he would be like the Booker or, or one of the main bookers. Probably the main Booker. Uh, do you consider why do you consider Pride pro wrestling? Uh, because Antonio Inoki is the Booker, <laughs> and because <laughs> its audience is entirely pro wrestling fans, and because it's the number one pro wrestling promotion right now in Japan. Uh, finally, to give the WCW world title credibility, they should send a former WWF champion that's never competed in WCW like Kurt Angle, win the belt, lose to Goldberg. I don't think Bill Goldberg is going to be part of this. Although, it's possible that he will be. I don't think he will be. Uh, I've noticed a lot of the sheets on the net have been saying TNN's given WF a time slot 8 to 10 on Friday. Well, we already know the story on that. Uh, that's not true. With the sale of WCW to WWF, the question that really is on everyone's mind is, whatever happened, what, is, what will happen to Bob Ryder? I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. Uh, what story was Shane Douglas? Did he leave WF on good terms and would be one of the guys who will have their contracts restructured? I think Shane Douglas I wouldn't is hold in your breath a lot of trouble. Way. I think he's in a lot of trouble. Uh, let's see. This is from Hector Velas who goes, I checked out the Matt Rats video on their site. I really like the match highlights. Totally hated the teeny bopper crap, but I'm really interested. Give me more information on Matt Rats, who formed it, and when they're going to have a TV deal. I don't know when they're going to have a TV deal. Uh, the moves in the matches are phenomenal. Uh, they really caught my interest. Um, it's, as I said when we were talking about this the other day, it's not something that's going to appeal to a lot of wrestling fans because it's totally aimed at teenage girls. So that's going to hurt a lot as far as like to mainstream pro wrestling fans. Um, as far as the TV, do you, do you know who formed it in the TV deal or anything? Because I know you know some people in it. No, I don't know who. Um, I know Teddy Hart's involved, and I actually don't even know the name of the other guy, but um, they're pretty much the main guys. If I can find that letter, I'll let you know the guy's name. Do you think WWE will book some of their top stars to wrestle dark matches, WWE tapings that may draw more fans? They won't have to tape TV in empty arenas. Interesting. You know, the idea that they send, like, Steve Austin or somebody like that or Kurt Angle to work the main events at, when they when they finally do tapings? It's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Uh, I, don't, no, I, I don't think they're going to do it, though, but uh, they may. I was wondering where I could get a copy of the Heroes of Wrestling pay-per-view. Uh, oh, I'm sure those are all over. 
<laughs> yeah, I think you could probably get it pretty easily. Um, yeah, I need to see Jason's name. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Dude, that's see. far from the only thing you see on that show. You need to watch the whole show. This goes from Sean. goes, I will lose all respect for Scott Snyder if he doesn't do what's right for the business tonight. I think he will. Because uh, he has to, or else he will never be working uh, in, the main, in the main events in a mainstream promotion for a long, long time. Uh, the first day of trading after they announced they bought WCW, WF stock rose $1.50. Wow. That. Yeah. In Winnipeg, Cyrus hosts a weekly radio show. Yesterday he revealed he had a deal with an announcer in the fusion-run WCW. <laughs> nice to reveal it. <laughs> he said he no longer had the deal. I guess Bischoff was going to make good a good decision and hire Cyrus. You know what? I can tell you something. Bischoff was going to make a lot of good decisions. <laughs> I don't know that, it, that overall he would turn it around or anything, but he was. He had a lot of good decisions that he was hiding. Uh, let's see, from Todd Ferretti, as far as equipment purchased in the WCW sale, uh, what did the WWF buy? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Are they going to use WF rings or w, WCW rings or WF ones? Uh, will the WWF keep any of its referees or will Earl Hebner? I, I think they'll probably keep the refs. Uh, do not know. Uh, let's see. This one, Jeremy goes, you know, for the first time in a long time, I'm actually very excited about the two shows tonight. I just hope it does not get added to the list of letdowns we've grown accustomed to. Hey, it may be great tonight, but tonight's, but it's over tonight, too. Yeah. You know. Uh, it was see. over last Monday, actually. It was over when, when the, um, when the, I mean, the transition's went. already gone through. Yeah. Do you know, do you think the rumors of Jerry Jarrett and Burt Prentice starting a new national promotion are true? Well, they're true as far as, um, they're talking about it. Uh, but. personally, I think it would be the greatest thing. For the wrestling business, because these are two of the greatest minds that ever came along. If, yeah, but where are they going to put their show? How are they going to do national promotion without a show? I mean, there's just, uh, you know, there's so many facts we talked about a million times. Great, they can, you know, they can talk and say, we're going to put this promotion together. They can help some money and get some guys, but then what? Yeah, no, hey, there's plenty of big-name guys that are going to be available. You know, more than, more than they have been available on the independent scene or by a third promotion. Or by a new promotion, I should say, to start out within a long, long time. But it's like, where's going to be the exposure? And also, the other thing is, is even if you can get the exposure, the amount of money it costs now for production. Because if you don't have good production, you can't compete. And that's where WCW lost all that money was trying to, you know, uh, you know, do the promotion. You know, I mean, do like major league production while not having major league revenue coming in. And again, and, and if somebody else, whether it's Jerry Jarrett or anyone, if they don't want to do major league production, they're not going to get anywhere. And if they do, they better have major league revenue coming in, and that ain't going to happen right away. Uh, let's see, I think the WWF and WCW could do a World Cup of Wrestling like New Japan and WCW did at Starcade when they merged the two together, maybe a big show like a WrestleMania or SummerSlam. Uh, WWF has no interest in anything with Japan right now. Uh, what's the status of Super Crazy? Um, it's up in the air. I don't know. Do you know if Jason Jett and Kid Romeo are in a spot in WCW? I am relatively sure that both guys will be offered a low contract. <laughs> uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Uh, let's see. How much stroke does Paul Heyman have in the WF storylines? Um, decent input. Amount. Yeah, he's got decent input. Yeah. Uh, WF needs to put Rob Van Dam on WCW TV. Well. Wouldn't hurt, but there's th the same reasons why they didn't hire him before. Are the same reasons that there's nothing's changed. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Putting aside all the cross promotion ideas for a minute, I'd like your opinion on tonight's scheduled main event for Raw. Putting Rock and Austin together as a team in order to have something to happen to create more tension between them is a no-brainer. But why are they booking them against another face team? I didn't even know. What the is part. the main event? I don't know. I was wondering if the bookers wanted to put them against Angle and Benoit, and then realize they can't let them beat Rock two on one. Uh, if they can't beat Rock two on one, what chance do they have against both of them as a team, even if one leaves the other hanging? I don't see this event generating that much crowd response, and without Benoit or Angle to carry the match, who would want it? Furthermore, it doesn't seem to do anything to help Helmsley and Undertaker build up. Maybe it's all a swerve and we'll be getting something different. I don't even know what the card is. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. When can I get Bischoff on the show? Uh, we'll ask. I don't know. Is there any chance we'll be stuck hearing Tony Schiavone? Losing thing, him is the best thing about the collapse of WCW. I think there's a good chance he will not be there. Um, you know, one thing I was thinking about today, though, is I think that at the very least he should be given a chance. Mm -hmm. I mean, part of me thinks he shouldn't because he's the face of the old WCW that everybody hated. But, I mean, we were talking about it before, like back during the hot period, he wasn't an embarrassment. 
Oh, he had something really to good. call that was entertaining for him, and he did, you know, a decent job. Uh, let's see. What's up with the WCW production crew? They can't keep any of these unprofessional people. Why do I have to contact and for a new? Who do I have to contact for a new production job? WWF. Uh, let's see. I've heard that Sting is on the list of people the WWF does not want. Sting being a problem is news to me. Can you expand on this a little more? It's not necessarily. I mean, it is a problem, but it's just a financial thing. There are certain guys, Kevin Nash, Sting, um, Goldberg, that it's just not going to happen. Unless I'm, I'd be very, very surprised. Financially, the way everything would have to work out, they would cost themselves huge amounts of money to work. So, and you know, it, it, you know, rather than sit at home and not work and make tons more. And I mean, I'm sorry, but I don't care what age you are. And Sting's 42. Nash is 42. You know, Goldberg's a little bit younger than them. But um, at that age, if you got, like in the case of Nash, Nash is at 1.6 million a year. To sit at home and do nothing, or, or he can get take a small a settlement, cut. and take a giant pay cut, and and then work, you know, like it's, you know, and then work for WWF if they would take him, which they probably won't anyway. And in the case of Sting, it's the same thing. I mean, it's like you know, like Sting's contract. I think it's somewhere between 1.6 and 2 million a year. WWF's not going to offer him more than probably 400 grand. He could, you know, like why go? You got, you really got to look at it from Sting's standpoint too. I mean, there was that year where he he worked one match. You know, yeah. one and match, got, and now he you got know, lazy. What's, what's he been doing? Never been good since year? Nothing. He's never been. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. You said the new time slot for WCW is Saturday's 11 p.m. When will this move take place? This Saturday, Saturday after that, a month from now. Uh, nobody, nobody knows. If they don't announce anything tonight, that means that there's no fina final decision made. It'll be as soon as they can get up. Though they want it up quick, though. Mike in Minnesota, you're first up. Hi, how you guys doing? Hey. Doing really good. I was just wondering about Lance Storm. You think he'll benefit from this? He was on the list. Um, benefits. If the, if uh, the show is a success, he'll benefit. If the show is not a success, the jury's out. So Any it's, chance um, of Jericho joining Team Canada? Uh, Chris Jericho joining Team Canada. I I mean, I give this a chance. I don't I don't expect it. I don't. I mean, ben, Benoit I would. Again, there's a chance. I don't. I wouldn't expect it because to go over there. That would mean that they would no longer be doing house shows, and I just don't see the WF taking Benoit and Jericho off house shows uh, right now. What about Storm going over there? Um, I think if, if the thing gets gutted, uh, he will end up there. Until then, uh, probably not right away. And uh, do you think some of the WCW guys will be asked to change their finishers, like Booker T and Kidman? Um, yes, probably, almost for sure. Kidman? Yeah, the yeah. same as Christian. Yep, oh, that's right, that's right, yeah. Yeah. And uh, tonight's main event for Raw is it's against Undertaker and Kane. Oh, Undertaker and Kane against Rock and Austin? Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. There goes oh, well. the string of good main events we were talking about. And you know, think... they'll shoot, obviously, they've got to shoot a huge angle. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, it makes sense, you know, in that sense. But, yeah, you're right. Main, main, it may not be at the level of, of all the main events we've been seeing of late. Yeah, it should still be good, though. Well, the angle will be good. I don't know about... You know, if, uh, if they do the new WCW show and it gets hot, they could tour. Yeah, of course. But until then. Yeah. You know, that, that's... that's Yeah, yeah. If, and they will they will tour if it gets hot. Do you think any of the young guys in WCW do house shows for WWF just to get some ring time, or...? Uh, not at the beginning, no. Um, at some point, you know, it's a possibility. What I would do... Is I would send those guys to Memphis and just have them do the TV, you know, do them the TV tapings every week, and send them to Memphis or Ohio Valley, maybe even more likely Ohio Valley, uh, so they get like three nights, four nights a week of wrestling, uh, you know, which they need. And actually, as far as that idea, that idea has been discussed. I know that, so it's a possibility. And are the rumors about the Hardy Boys and Edge and Christian being there tonight? Is that true or what? No, they weren't. They were um, down there. I mean, I, I can't say for sure because I don't know exactly who's going to be there and who's not. But those guys were down there for public appearances that had nothing to do with Nitro. They okay. were all down there. But um, I'm of the impression they're going to be in Cleveland tonight. I, again, I don't. I don't know that for sure, though. One final question. You know, another idea that. is to take like uh, some of the guys that are really banged up, send them to WCW, let them have the uh, couple months off or whatever until they start touring, and just do the uh, TV. That's not you a bad idea. Party's got to need a break. 
That's a good idea. That's a real good idea to send the Hardy Boys down there just so they can, like, they only have to work one day a week and they can rest up. The problem is, though, is that all these guys are not going to be happy if you do that because all of a sudden their pay is going to go way down because they're only working one day a week instead of uh, four days a week, and they're going to want the money when business is hot. You know what I mean? Because we all know business isn't going to stay at this level forever. And, yeah. and you, you know, everyone in wrestling wants to be out there on the road right now, especially in WWF, where your pay is determined by business, that when you're still drawing sellouts, you want to be out there because, you know, I mean, the bumps hurt just as much to an empty house, if you know what I mean, but the pay's not as good. I'm sure they could cut some sort of deal where they go, look, we'll pay you for uh, this many house shows a week just for the time being till we start touring with this company. And, you know. There's ways they could do it. It's just a question, will they? they, uh, WWF can do anything they want. It's just a question, will they do it? Yeah. Yeah, they could. Yeah, of course they could. Anything else? Uh, What's going to happen with the power plant? I would presume it'll be shut. You know, I pretty strongly presume. Maybe everyone will show up tomorrow and they'll be uh, having a meeting outside. (laughs) Yeah, that's right, because they get the big meeting at the power plant. (laughs) So Paul and and all of them are out of jobs there. Um, so, I mean, WWF may take some of them. But, as far as um, trainers at the power plant, they're out of jobs. But. Yeah, but um, they may not. They, you know, they may take, as far as for the power plant guys, yeah, I don't know. I don't know their odds are that good of uh, uh, being hired as trainers. Because WWF already has their own trainers. Think Hacksaw will be in the Battle Royal? Oh, Duggan? Yeah. If they ask him, I'm sure he will. If they don't ask him, it's up to it's up to WF bookers. I don't know. Okay, well, thanks. Okay, you're very welcome. Let's go to Alan St. Louis. Al, what's going on? Hi, Brian Dave. Hey. hey, I have a question. Um, is this deal to, is the WWF deal to buy WCW? Is it like 100% final? No, it is not 100% final, but it, I don't expect it to fall apart because there's nobody else to sell to. Okay. So, you know, it's it's you know it, again, it, it will probably be final by the end of the week as far as final final. But they've signed, you know, it's basically as final as the fusion deal was to buy WCW in January, which has turned out never happened. Okay. Okay, and one more, and another thing. Um, well, so what's gonna happen to like the non W, the, the non wrestling staff in WCW, like the executives and the people who run the website? I don't think anyone knows the answer to that right now. Um, that's all They're up to need WWF. To keep some of the office crew just to take some of the strain off their own office crew. I mean, yeah. people that can do jobs and aren't. Um, you know, they're obviously not going to take someone that uh, is going to do like what Jim Ross is doing because he's going to be in charge of that. But someone who maybe, uh, I don't know. Maybe like someone who's booking the arenas, they'll keep them or something. Mm, I think they're going to book their own arenas. Really? Yeah, yeah, I am pretty sure of that one. Yeah, they'll book their own arenas. Because because you got to remember the people who are booking the arenas, they booked the arenas during a time period where they were running six nights a week with three shows a night. So now running four nights a week, the idea of like having to give them an extra night, you know what I mean? Okay. That that crew has has booked a thousand shows a year. Now they're booking two hundred. So and it's the same crew. So the idea of like if it increases from 200 to say 300 shows, uh, they're not going to hire. They're not going to hire like the people from WCW to do that. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so is the plan right now to have like the WCW up like on Saturday nights on TNN. That's the plan as of right now. Yeah. Okay. And um, another thing, uh, Missy Hyde mentioned a website called RingRats.com. What is the website? Do you know what the ad- address is? Brian might. I don't know. Com. What is Ringrats. it? There's a dash after the ring, though. Ring-rats.com. Ring-rats.com. Okay, and I never could, and okay, one last question. Are all the um, WWF um, um, pay-per-views this year still set? You know, are they all still set? The WCW? WWF things? I don't know yeah, what I mean, set. the WWF are pay-per-views. WWF pay-per-views are all going to be the same, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much. Okay, very welcome. Let's go to Jonathan in New York. Jonathan, what's going on? Yes, how are you doing, um, Dave? Doing really good. Um, first off, uh, I want to know, now that um, Vince McMahon has become the Julius Caesar of wrestling, what does Eric Bischoff have to say about all this? As far as, I think he's very, very disappointed. I mean, what is he doing now? Um, I don't know what he's doing now. Probably trying to sell non-wrestling television shows like he did with that, uh, what was that thing called with the cars? I forget. I'm oh, sure he's going to try to come uh, up with... Right. I don't even remember the name of it anymore. Something on wheels. I don't know. Okay. But no, I think he'll probably try to do something in the television industry. I'm guessing. Right. And and, and um, now that the um, well, the WWF purchase of WCW is not final. You said right. It's so, not 100 percent final, but it's it's it, this one's really not going to fall apart though, because there's no there's the, there's no way it can. I, I guess is the best way of putting it. 
So does that leave like an open slot for like the uh, the uh, lower companies such as XPW or UPW or anything like that to make it, you know, boom? Mm, I mean, it, it 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 would leave some talent for those guys to get if those if that those pieces of talent are willing to work cheap enough to fit into those companies' budgets. I mean, like I'll just give you an example for UPW. Okay, right. UPW only runs one show a month mm. in the Galaxy Theater. Mm. It holds about 700 plus people, and they're going to draw 700 people. They 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 fill it every single month. So yeah, they could add. Ten great guys, Jerry Lawler and Buff Bagwell and Luger and Steiner Brothers and all this. But they're, you know, all it's going to do is cost them money because it's not going to make them an extra dime. So, yeah. oh, you know, so it's like economically, yeah, you can do it. Yeah, there's more guys out there. If it's done right and the guys are willing to work within the independent framework of money, um, yeah, it can help the independents. It can. This, this can help it a little bit. I don't really bit. know how much help it's going to be, though, because if you look back, like, um, you know, a few weeks ago, we were talking about all the ECW guys that went off and were doing independents. And it wasn't like they were doing shows that all of a sudden were doing 3,000 people. They were working shows with 150 people, just like any other. No, no, that's right. They haven't made any difference really um, at all. The only independent shows, um, the only show, I shouldn't say independent, but the only shows in this country that are really drawing over 1,000 people were the last two weeks. Uh, AAA did one, and the Lucha shows, and the Ultimate Fight shows. I mean, the, yeah. the independent wrestling I mean, uh, very rarely draws a thousand people now. So it's I mean, those you're not are, those are really... a big star like Lex Luger or Kevin Nash to come in for five hundred bucks. They're going to want just a ton of money, and the guys that are going to come in for five hundred bucks aren't going to mean probably five hundred dollars worth of tickets. Well, well, then uh, what happened to Vince Russo? Whatever happened to that guy? Um, he's still alive, and he's just collecting his money from WCW. <laughs> oh man! And um, apparently, does um, ECW still exist? Um. <laughs> The, the, the letters still exist. Yeah, I think, I think Vince McMahon, I think yeah, Vince McMahon yeah. owns the letters now. I'm pretty sure he does. Um, okay. So, so it is, and, uh, you know, yeah, they, I think they've got the rights to it. Okay, and one last question. What the heck is McMahon doing with Taz, man? Why the hell is he just, like, sitting around? I mean, isn't he, you know, fit to get his push like Raven did? Well, Raven hasn't gotten that big of a push either. You know, it's, it's real tough. It's a competitive situation, and, um, I think Taz is actually doing pretty well for himself. You know, I mean, if he was wrestling, he'd be mm. dead by now. Oh, I mean, the fact that he's, he's doing the human suplex machine in ECW, he was feared, man. Come on, you know. <laughs> Wait a second, man. He was, he was feared because Paulie was a great booker. But when you got a guy who's five foot six, you know, in WWF with all those huge guys, the whole size thing yeah. just changed the whole dynamic. Well, well, speaking of huge, you know, I was thinking he'd go against the Big Show and just like you know have like a David and Goliath thing, and just he just beat and choke him out. Yeah, he just beat the crap out of the big show. That would, that would have been real great, you know? Well, it would be great if you could convince Vince McMahon to do it. But that's not Vince McMahon's mentality. I mean, we're, we're, we're still trying to convince him to let Benoit beat the big show, and that hasn't happened yet either. Hey, why was the XFL rating down this week? Yeah, yeah, there you go. The, X, the XFL sucks. It's basically ba based on those cheerleaders of Vince McMahon's, you know? It's, it's um, you well, know, I, I don't know. I just, it's just no liking to it. I, I'll stick with the NFL. Okay. You know, thank you very much. Oh, and okay, I'm you're... real sorry about the WCW purchase thing. I hope Bischoff has something else planned or whatever. <laughs> you know? I mean, okay. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Yeah, nice yeah. speaking this to you. This guy has every question we've been ranting about on the website. Let's go to Arthur. Arthur, what's up? Hey, Dave. Uh, first off, I have a question about WCW, but before I get to that, I was just wondering, uh, I just spent a half hour on uh, mixed martial arts when uh, today's like the biggest story in pro wrestling. Uh, because there were over 20,000 people, and it was the biggest wrestling show of the last three months in Japan. And we do cover Japan on the show. Yeah, but I mean, like, everyone wanted to know I was going with WCW. Well, and that's what we're that. talking about, too. But there was that's a huge show yet. on Sunday Tomorrow night. Be the day. Okay, yeah. and uh, I was just wondering another thing. Why do you always go to emails before uh, the callers? That's just a uh, tradition. Tradition? Okay. Like the NWA? It's got Something nothing to do with like the NWA. It's just the, the the first segment of the show we talk about the news. The second segment we usually do emails. We got a little bit behind uh, on this one. We change it around a little bit, and uh, that's just the way we do it. Okay. And then my question is, do you think uh, Jerry Lawler will end up as the announcer for WCW? If he's willing to come in without his wife, he's got a good shot at it. If he's not willing to come in without his wife, then he's got no shot at it. I and think it's, I always, it's the same. This is the same uh, situation it was a week ago. Right. And do you think Cat's going to become like a stripper or something? Mm, I don't think so. No. 
Well, I, mean, I don't. I, I mean, don't think so. I don't it. know. I don't know. I don't know what she's going to do. I mean, she's no, she's, she's cat's going to stay. Cat's going to stay in. Cat's going to stay in wrestling and work uh, Memphis every every uh, Saturday morning. I'm sure that's what she'll do. Anything else? He's gone. He's gone. Let's go to Mark. Mark, what's up? Mark. Ma Hello. Mark in Brooklyn. Yeah. Hey, yeah, uh, I have a question for you. Whatever happened to Jerry the King Lawler? Uh, Jerry Lawler quit WWF a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah? Uh, because they fired his wife. Who's his wife? A uh, cat. Oh, word. Um, right. I have one more question for you. What's, what's this whole thing with um, Stone Cold Steve Austin and Vince McMahon? And um, for, are they supposed to be joining up together now? Uh, good shot. Good cool. shot of it, yeah. Okay, that's all I have, man. Thanks a lot. Okay. Let's look at some of this. This is from Vince McMahon. Because <laughs> the only positive long-run result... Of WF buying WCW is hopefully guys like Nash Bagwell, Luger, and the Steiners won't work in a big promotion again. Now, somebody will start something, and they will. Uh, see, will Sting and Goldberg be on Nitro tonight? Uh, as far as I know, no. Uh, does Sting have any interest in joining WCW? Whether he does or he doesn't, I think financially, it doesn't make any sense for him to do so. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Do you think any of the following people have a chance to make it in WCW? Jason Jett? Yep. Good shot. Good shot. Dave Cash? Shot. Lenny Lane? Maybe No. Juventud Guerrera, not right now. Sabu, not for a long time, if ever. Uh, let's see. This is from Jack, who goes, Am I the only person who thinks this change should be welcomed? Wrestling has always been, has been stale for a while now. This is what everyone always wrote fantasy columns about, and finally it has come true. Your fantasy may be better than the reality on this one. Maybe not. You know, we'll see. With Vince McMahon behind the wheel of the new operation, don't you think it will eventually lead to exciting sports entertainment? I think, I think that it will probably do that. I just think that... Uh, you know, it's just such a tough time for the wrestlers. Um, and it's this is from Duncan, who goes in his conference call. Triple H talked about Ric Flair being his hero, and talked about his in his match at No Way Out. He did Ric Flair the Ric Flair flop figure four. Actually, he didn't do the Ric Flair flop. He did the um, Harley Race thing, which he does in, in a lot of his big matches. Uh, figure four leg lock, which in fact Helmsley does a lot in his matches. A lot of people talk about Triple H as the new Ric Flair because he draws big heat. He can work different styles. Cuts a good promo. Can carry anyone to a three-star match. Politically smart. So now that WWF owns WCW, are they going to job Flair to Helmsley to help cement that image? Um, who knows? I mean, it's possible. I mean, Flair would have to come, which I know that they want Flair, so I think that would probably end up happening. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as Flair coming in, working with Helmsley, if Helmsley wants to do it, I'm sure Flair would love the If Helmsley wants to do it, I, I think he'd die for it. Well, then, it, then there's a good shot it'll happen. We're still getting tons of emails. This is like record-setting pace. It's from Ryan who goes, is Shawn Michaels still supposed to be on Raw tonight? The last I heard, which was, um, God, what would it have been? Saturday, Saturday night, uh, Shawn Michaels and Mick Foley were still scheduled. I haven't, I mean, I've talked to people, but I haven't asked anyone since then. Uh, let's see. Well, all the hey, Michael, get... send him over. That's not, we, that's not the worst idea. Not Especially you know health shows. Just be on you know, TV. Not doing house shows. Just come at TV, work uh, work maybe once a month, but do interviews the other three weeks. Big name. Yep. Th that's a good idea. Uh, it says, Pro Wrestling Torch reported that Shane McMahon is in Panama City. Oh, he absolutely is. I can tell you that. The website also reports there will be a live feed from Nitro on Raw. Their sources are very good. Uh, let's see. Would not the move of a WF wrestler to WCW affect their financial situation? Uh, yes, it would. For example, if they sent Triple H to WCW, he would not be on house shows on Raw or SmackDown, and he would not receive money for doing house shows and would basically be working four to five days a month instead of 15 days a month. And do you know if they would use WCW rings instead of WF rings? I don't know what they're going to do about the rings. Um, the whole deal is if they were to do that and send a guy over, they were go they're going to have to restructure their contracts to make it worthwhile or else it's unfair to the guys. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, since they own both companies, there's no reason they cannot restructure the contract to do that. Uh, let's see... Your panel was wrong about Shane McMahon. He has nothing to prove. He has taken more bumps than the majority of WCW talent. Oh, he's taken more. <laughs> he hasn't taken more. He hasn't taken more than yeah. almost any WCW talent. He's taken some big bumps, that's for sure. He has experienced the business from the ground up, and you would think that some of Vince would rub off. But he has not proven anything as a promoter on his own. And this won't be him proving anything in reality as a promoter on his own because it's Titan Sports. It's not Shane McMahon. But from a public standpoint... Um, that's what this is all. That's part of what this is all about. Did WF pick up the contracts of Mike Moss and Christopher Daniels? No, uh, I don't think they had contracts. They were going to be signed after um, Bischoff got the company. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris from Thompson, Manitoba, goes when you ask the poll whether it's good for wrestlers, it should be divided into three categories: good for main eventers, which it is, 
Actually, it's bad for and the main bad eventers. bad for the main eventers. Good for mid-carters, which it, yeah, good for mid-carters, which it can be. It can be very good for the mid-carters um, if they get a chance and make it. There are some guys, and there are going to be some guys who are going to come out real good with this that were held back. Good for the curtain jerkers, which it won't be. Actually, it's probably going to be the same for those of them that are that stay. Uh, you don't because they weren't going to get they weren't going to get a big push in WCW anyway. No. I was looking at the active WWF roster, not including the females. It's got 52 active male wrestlers on the roster. If you count the women, developmental WCW guys, you go over 100, which has to be one of the largest rosters ever. Yeah, WCW had a huge roster a couple of years ago. Were they up to like 150 at one point? They were at some. I think it was on like some huge number. You know when they were just like making money like crazy and they just signed everyone they could? Hired everybody. This is from Jeff from California. How can any of the WCW wrestlers under contract like Sting, Nash, and Goldberg refuse to appear on Nitro Night if asked? Isn't that a violation of their guaranteed contracts? How can they get say no and still get a paycheck? I have wondered that one myself, and I don't know the answer, but I think that because they were asked by Eric Bischoff, who is no longer in control of the show tonight, that they're not saying no to anyone from Time Warner. You know what I mean? As to a superior? I, I just kind of figured it was like, even if Vince McMahon told them to show up and they didn't, it's not like he can terminate someone who's under a Time Warner contract. Exactly. Unless someone from Time Warner told them that they had to come, in which, which case, which which hasn't happened. But why would they do that? Why does Time Warner care anymore? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, explain why the WF book Austin Rock against Undertaker and Kane. We'll find out tonight. I, I'm sure they have a good idea. They're all faces. How does the crowd know who to cheer for? They will yeah, cheer the, for uh, Steve Austin. They're going to cheer for who they want to cheer for, and they're going to cheer for him loud. They may cheer for all of them. The only sense the match can make is if Vince ordered it to happen. I'm kind of tired of that being the only reason why a main event happens. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. I think the WF buying WCW and running it separate is better than the alternative of the dead WCW. It is better than that alternative. That's yeah. true. If the WF order will allow WCW to die instead of buying them, uh, it actually would have been the same exact thing. They would still pick up the ones who they want to at a low price. I mean, that would actually make no difference one way or the other. It would make no difference for the wrestlers as far as for the fans. Um, it would give them a if chance to If they didn't have like, see... the WCW trademark and everything like that and have the desire to keep it alive. Yeah. This is from George who goes, I watched The Last Thunder on Wednesday and I just was about to change the channel on the Dustin Rhodes segment. Ric Flair appeared and started to cut his promo. During the promo, Nature Boy set fire to what was a trash segment. Also electrified the crowd, which wasn't close to capacity. Uh, hey, man, I don't know if he electrified long... the crowd. <laughs> My point is... All the Mark fans in me from the last Wednesday until whenever it happens cannot wait for Rick to walk down the ramp on Raw and pop a capacity crowd. Uh, which brings me to my question, will any WCW wrestlers appear on Raw? I think eventually they're going to have to. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Just to build up Raw, just to shoot angles, to tell people to watch on Saturday nights when the thing starts. Let's start with Alan in Florida. Alan, what's up? Doing today. Hey. Hey, I had a few questions. Um, You guys... About the roster with the WCW, how big do you think the roster should be? Evidently, we know they're not going to take all their, you know, the talent. I mean, are they going to get most of the other talent, I guess, from their development territories and stuff like that? Or independent? I think it depends. No, I'm sure they'll bring in some ECW guys. Um, they may bring in a few of their developmental guys, like Steve Bradley or Scott Vick, that they've been wanting to bring to the main show, but just haven't had a slot open for them. They're not going to bring um, up any guys that aren't ready. No, it'd be stupid to do that. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I don't think they will do that. How, how big do you think their roster should be? I mean, it's not, I mean, what, how many? You got to do two hours guys. of TV, two hours of TV every week. Yeah, maybe thirty-five guys. That should be decent enough. How about tag teams? Though, I mean, is there enough tag teams even on their roster? Well, they got. They, they can get as many as they want. They, I mean, they, they, whatever they want, they're going to hire anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 not a number. It's like whoever they want, they're going to hire. Whoever they don't want, they're not going to hire. And it's up to the, the people, you know, the booking people to. Figure out what they want and don't want, and who fits into what, who fits into their plans. Now, do you think also McMahon might some of the wrestlers from WCW, like some of them might, you know, how he's a genius for gimmicks and stuff. You don't think he's going to change some of their, like, give them characters, some of them that, you know. Oh, absolutely, he will. Absolutely. Yeah. And one more quick question, you guys. Somebody was asking before about ECW. I heard something on the net. I don't know. You know, I'm one of those news boards. It doesn't mean it's you know accurate information or whatever. But that McMahon might like use that as a development group like you know how he has like the big two he might buy them i guess i guess uh they, they they could do that but i don't think they will and the reason i say that is that um they've already got developmental things in memphis puerto rico and ohio valley they really don't need they've got more guys in developmental than they'll 
ever know what to do with, so why add another developmental territory? There's just no purpose to it now. They, and yeah. and yeah, they, they still may do it. I'm just thinking, I'm looking at it from a logical standpoint. You don't need more than three. And they yeah, I mean, they already just got WCW. I don't know why they would want to have a third group running, owned by them. I mean, we yeah. would all know they'll, they'll, run by them, but... Yeah, they're, they're going to. They'll probably use the ECW name in some form or fashion in an angle, you know, sooner yeah. than later. But but um, I don't see them like running ECW shows, and certainly not ECW style shows. They may, you know, I, I don't see it. Yeah, I don't see it either. All right, well, it was nice talking to you, and I first time caller, and I like your show. It's pretty good. And I'll continue listening to it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Appreciate it. Let's go to Andy in Long Island. Andy, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Dave, I'm a first time caller, but a long time fan of the Wrestling Observer. Thank you. Uh, you are definitely a genius in this business, and uh, you have a big part no matter what anybody says. Oh, thanks. Well, I'm very sincere when I say that. Anyhow, um, just a little a little note. I don't know if you're at Sam A. Job. That's two New Jersey indie workers this past week, and he put over Jerry DeBall on Homicide for Jersey All-Pro. Uh-huh. Actually, he put Homicide over in the ECW arena. I know it doesn't oh, mean Sam a lot, yeah. but I guess three or four months ago, it would have been a huge story. Yeah, yeah, Sam Man losing at the ECW arena. To the, to the, yeah, I heard about that, yeah. Um, also, uh, it's a shame that NWA doesn't have their, uh, you know what together because uh, this would be a perfect time if they had some money behind them and something going on for, for them to really build things up and uh, become a, a major force in this business. It would be the perfect time for anyone with a lot of money who could secure television. It is the perfect time for anyone like that. The problem is, is, is the money in the television. TV. Yeah. And it's just terrible for guys like Mike Rapata. Because, you know, Mike Rapata is a world champion, but he has nowhere to show, show himself off anymore. You know, doesn't the thing is if they actually had had talent, then Mike Rapata wouldn't be the world champion. So it's kind of like a double edged sword. <laughs> I know, I kind of said it tongue in cheek. Um, yeah. I don't know if you caught any of Prentice's shows lately. It's pretty bad. I mean, he's got like Tony Falk doing his gimmick. Have you heard this yet? Two Falk for sure. He's doing like he, a white guy acting like Tupac. Yeah, I saw that when he did that gimmick in Memphis like about a year ago. Oh That's my God, it's awful. And uh, what's, oh, what's the story of the New South gimmick, by the way? The New South is it's like a. Um, What's the, it's it's like two guys. It's, it's actually so it's, it's an Australian guy and a and a African American guy who are kind of pretending to be like you know good old boy Confederate rebels. What was the origin of it? Do you know? I think just that, just that idea that you know like um, the South will rise again and all the rednecks, you know, in that area, you know, are, are like like wave the Confederate flag. That's always been kind of a thing, like you know, Southern boys and all that. And to have like an African American and an Australian do it, that's the the heat behind it. Because I really think that Corey Williams, uh, it's, 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 it's another guy who's going to be hurt by this whole thing. Because I think it would, it would a little uh, feel like a, a coach, like a Paul Heyman, to help him out with his uh, mic skills. He could be a major force in this business. Really? I haven't I'm seen not, enough I'm of him. I'm not about seen... Ashley Hudson, though. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 Ashley Hudson was with Daphne, and then that was another Ozzie. one of those angles. Ozzy, yeah. <laughs> the great Ozzy. He went to Australia and never came back. <laughs> he went to Australia, and that was it. And do you guys really think Jason Jett's going to get picked up? Because I think he's got a huge future. I think strongly. I'd be very surprised if he wasn't because he did real well on the last few weeks of TV. And I cannot imagine when they consult with various people, when WF consults with various people, and they go through the list of people in WCW and ask, okay, what do you think of Jason Jett? I can't imagine anyone going like, no, you know, also, you know, I'm sh yeah, I, I, I would be shocked if he's not picked up. And you're pretty sure we're going to see Rey Mysterio? Rey Mysterio, I am not sure of. They were very negative on Rey Mysterio, but I know some people went to bat for him, um, like Benoit and them, um, at the Garden the other night to Stephanie McMahon. So um, I, I, I'm tending to think that they will pick up Rey Mysterio when all is said and done. I think, so I think the, the negative I, Conan rub just really hurts him, and really I think he's a great worker, a great innovator, and he does have a place in his business. But why? I don't understand why. You know, you can't be judged by the fact, like, who your friends are. I mean, I mean everyone's got... Everyone in this world's got some pretty unsavory friends, except for Brian, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, say, I, I think it's a terrible uh, preconceived notion that they have about Ray, and I don't think it's true. Yeah, I mean, like, like, like Hunter's friends with Nash, does that mean they ought to fire him? Yeah, just incredible, for that matter. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to get going. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, this is sweet Andy Rapata saying, woo! Okay, cool. Let's go. Okay, I'm going to read this from Andy <laughs> Patrizio, who's been trying to get in. Um... He goes, as for WCW, perhaps the 11 to 1 hour will allow for more raunchy stuff, but that time slot just plain stinks. I hope WCW, they use WCW as the work rate federation with emphasis on light heavyweights. I think that they're going to do emphasis on light heavyweights just because that's the guys who they've they're got They're going to have light heavyweights. Yeah, I think, that, yeah. I mean, I, I, don't, I, I don't think it's like something that McMahon would want to do, but I think that it's just going to end up that way. 
Okay. My idea for an angle uh, with the group would be to, uh, would be for them to resist the WF domination and do some sort of a breakaway declaration of independence type angle. Imagine the fun Steve Regal could have with the Rogue Federation declaring its independence from King Vince. Actually, that sounds pretty funny. <laughs> it actually does. It really does. I don't know you if anyone would take it seriously, though, just because of the way they look at Regal, but for us, no, it's, but it's pretty it's funny. Just, no, but it's just, it's just for fun. Yeah. You mentioned the startup would have, would have an impossible time due to the talent being locked up. But if someone comes along with deep pockets, the first thing they should do is challenge the legality of WF contracts. If wrestlers are subcontractors, shouldn't they be legal, legally allowed to subcontract elsewhere? Boy, this is something that's been around for about 10 years. And it's don't exactly hold your breath at this time of anything like that happening. Yeah, if there's so a Who's the first guy that's going to go knock on Vince's door and go, um, Vince, i got something to talk to you about um, regarding my contract. I'm an independent contractor, and i got an opportunity to, to work. You know the only guy who ever I got, got away with... i got to work the uh, Wild Side show this weekend, Vince, if you... Uh... <laughs> If you don't want to negotiate. You know, um, um, there's one guy who actually got away with it during the um, NWA, WWF wars in the 80s. Uh, Roddy Piper still worked for Don Owen. It was, mm -hmm. I don't know how he ever did it, but he <laughs> did. Uh, if there's legal, okay, uh, I don't know if it's against the law or how contracts are ordered, but I do know the contracts are totally against the workers. God knows they are. Uh, so I'd love to know if this is a weakness for the WWF. As for another dead federation, I found it from a local exercise store where the W, the, where the WWO, WOW girls visit that they lost their advertisers over the pay-per-view. Oh, um, come on now. How can that be? Yeah, Selena Majors was not supposed to juice, but she did hit a gusher and that scared off their advertisers. <laughs> <laughs> that combined with them not paying for television time anymore is probably why they're off the air here in L.A. I think it's not paying for the TV time especially. And they haven't run a show since. It's bad enough. They screwed up their big chance in front of a huge live audience with bad booking, but the juice made it even worse. Uh, by the way, Roxy Powers is going to be in the new Spider-Man movie, which could be visually amusing seeing Tobey Maguire, the star of the movie, who's built like Taka, standing next to a six-foot woman built like China. Finally, you've talked about how out of favor wrestling is right now with cable. Why would a, why with a 5.0 rating on basic cable would it be out of favor? I don't know why, but it just is. He goes, I suspect the answer is Lionel Tate. His defense was totally wrong, but he used wrestling as an excuse. The media covered it big. And what he did to that girl in graphic detail, I think Tate soured a lot of people on pro wrestling and totally wrongfully. You were right. It, that is one of the things that keeps getting brought up, and it is and it is completely unfair. I, I, for one, am bummed about the failure of the XFL. I've come to enjoy the games now that the play has improved. The first month it stunk, no question. In hindsight, they should have gone on the air only in the eight cities where they have teams for the first year to work out the bugs, then go national the second year. Vince does have an argument about media bias. The XFL has higher ratings in L.A. than the Lakers, and local media can't be bothered to do more than cursory coverage. The local NBC affiliate ran Vince's comments two weeks ago about how he feels play has improved and people should give it a second look. They ran it like an editorial with no commentary from local sports anchor. Since one of the sports anchors without an opinion, it would have it wouldn't have killed Carlos to say something along the lines that yes, the play was shaky at first, but it has improved. But he couldn't be bothered. One thing I don't understand is why they don't move the Saturday show. What a, when a primetime show is struggling, they move the time slot without hesitation. Here we have week after week of declining ratings, and it remains in prime time. Why don't they just move it to five Eastern and be done with it? Because they got I think they got other programming. That's why. Let's go to uh, is it Chris? Chris? Is Chris next up? Yes, Chris. Uh, hi. How's it going? Hey, Chris. How are you doing? Okay. Um, I was curious, a couple of things. The Steiner thing that was up on his website, um, was that just, I mean, do you think there's any uh, possibility that there's something to that that wasn't just him being, you know, not too bright and putting that up? Because, I mean, he mentions the NWO as if it's like an actual that was thing. That was put up by, um, it wasn't put up by Scott, it was put up by someone, like one of his web people. The webmaster. But I think that site is down today, so. Yeah, they said something about they were going to close, but wouldn't like. Wouldn't anything they put up, since it's like representing him, especially something like that, wouldn't he sort of have to okay it or tell him, hey, put this up? That I don't know. He, I, I don't know for sure. I, I, I was under the. I, I don't know. I think that it was something that they put up on their own, and it didn't have anything to do with him. Uh, nobody, the nobody fact is going to be stupid enough to uh, be unprofessional, shoot on somebody, or anything like that, if they even remotely want to work for the WWF. That's what I mean. But I'm, that's, 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 that's why I'm saying if he's like, if these guys work for him, and you know what I mean, for them to be. They should not putting have that up that. there. Exactly. That's what I mean. So either he knew about it and let them, because, I mean, would they be dumb enough to, of all people to piss off? Are they going to piss him off? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? To put them Over up. the Internet, people will say and do a lot of things. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> people people who piss a lot of people off on that <laughs> without without thinking of the long-term repercussions. Yeah. I mean, um, all Scott has to do is go tonight, be a professional, and say, dude, I didn't even know what that was up there. I didn't do it. And, and then just do the that. job. Didn't come as long as he does the job, China. just as long as he does the job, everyone will be happy. Yeah, because they said he was like, was he was trying to get fans to like, uh, I don't know if it was him or the website, but 
They were trying to get fans yep. to write to the yep. WWF to convince them to hire him because, you know, yep. they're supposedly so sour on him. Yep, um, that's right. I heard something too. I don't know if this is true. Just one of the, some rumor that um, J- that Jason Jett and Sean O'Hare had some kind of a um, run in backstage. Yes, they did. They did have that. Yeah, there was something they about did have him. that. Yeah, a couple weeks ago. I think maybe two weeks cho- ago. I heard what I heard was like he choked him out because he, that O'Hare choked Jett out or something because he was kind of walking around with a big head. Um, I mean, I don't know why he did it, but that was the end result I heard. Yeah. Yeah, he did choke him out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also, too, the uh, the Battle Royal WrestleMania, is that, is, are they actually going to go through with that, or is that some kind of, or some that might be like an April Fool's joke or something? That I, I, I think they'll go through with it. It'll be an April like, Fool's joke, that's for sure, yeah. but... But, that, I mean, that's something that actually, it's going to be done in, like, just as an actual match, or just, I mean... Yeah, hopefully it'll be kept short. It'll, I think it'll just be a lot of ring entrances, and then they'll just try to get the match over with as quick as they can. You think it might work in uh, just, Pete Rose being at the show or something, maybe in the... Uh, Kimchi outfit the or consider, gobbledygooker. Yeah, I mean, gobbledygooker everyone's saying, outfit. Yeah, gobbledygooker. Yeah, every, everyone's expecting that, but... Uh, yeah, they, 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 they may do it. Hardcore match. What? Maybe oh, the tag team in a hardcore match, since it's, you know, yeah, it's a hardcore match. Yeah, probably. It's like like the thing with Pete Rose is everyone expects it'll be Pete Rose because he'll, like, win this battle royal. But in order for that to happen, that means it actually has to go to a finish, which means guys like the Iron Sheik have to bump over the top rope. <laughs> and I don't think that's going to happen. I think someone's going to run in and just end the thing and beat everyone up, and they can just roll out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with, on the WCW end, does, um, they have the deal with Michael Buffer. Is that, like, does Vince have to honor no. that? That he has no. to, he no. doesn't? No, he does not. No. Okay, I was just curious. Not, that that was not among the 16 contracts that were, or 24 contracts that were bought. Well, what I meant was, well. You don't know about those other nine names, though. No, I, I think that I would have heard if Buffer was one of the names. Okay. The ones that they bought, um, this is the, this is the only part I understand. They bought them because they were the cheap, they were the cheapest ones or or good prices yes. or whatever. But they're yes. going to renegotiate those anyway and renegotiate the high ones. So why did it matter, like that they bought these cheap ones to, re- you know what I mean? Like why did they have because to because now because the cheap ones, these guys don't have a chance to go anywhere. The other ones, um, you know, the the other ones that it's it's a lot it's a lot more tricky. And I think that um, they want to put pressure on them to come in with a lower price, whereas the other guys. The cheap ones, they don't care if they come in with, you know, they're, they know that they don't got to come in with a, I mean, they, they don't have to give these guys a lower price to come in because they already got a lower price starting out. Right. So we'll just keep them, you know what I mean? But I heard the, the, all, of the 24 that they're not all necessarily going to be kept. I mean, no, is that true? No, no, not, 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 I mean, I would think that they all have a good shot, but if one of them screws up, no, of course they won't be kept. Well, I mean, not even for screwing up just initially that it was just sort of a, a paper thing that they did, that they had to take a certain amount of contracts, do that just for... No, they didn't have to take any contracts. They did that. They did the, They just looked at the contracts and go, okay, wait, this guy makes this. Hey, we don't mind that. This guy makes this. We don't mind that. This guy makes this. Screw that, you know? Right. So, and, uh, so uh, but, but I mean, if the, the guys who, if, if a guy was cheap and they didn't want him, they wouldn't have taken him. Right. There's no point in buying a contract of a guy you'd... Don't want. I'm surprised they took stage X. Didn't he leave on bad terms with the tape recording, all the wrestlers? Yeah, whatever, but you know, the whole it thing... It wasn't like really so much bad terms as something that actually really might have been a misunderstanding. And Ooh. also, you know, Stacey X, one of those guys, he's always, you know, he's always going to get a shot. Yeah, Billy Gunn kind of, kind of thing. Yeah, the same, yeah, they're, they're going to give him a shot. I think it'd be a tag team now. <laughs> God. Billy Gunn and Stacey I'd rather them be yeah. a team than wrestle each other, though. Have an actual <laughs> one-on-one match. Chris, we got to get running, Okay. Okay. And, uh, Brian, you want to guess how many emails we got today? 132. 273. Oh, my God. Yep. I'm going to go to about five of them, then we're going to finish up with the phone calls. We've got a full bank of phone calls. We've had it since the start of the show. Who's going to call WrestleMania? Will it be Ross and Heyman? Yes, it, as, of light, as of right now, it is Ross and Heyman. And will Pete Rose be there? I, For some reason, I assume that he will, but no one's actually told me that he will. It's from Ben Miller. It goes, Roddy Piper told me the show he did in Denver drew 2,500. Is that true? No, but it drew, like, Fourteen or fifteen hundred. I had the number in the Observer a couple weeks ago, uh, which was like the paid attendance. I think it's like I'm guessing fourteen fifty range. The reason I ask is the comment that no indie promotions are drawing a thousand. Actually, um, even bringing in older stars. Well, Piper, of of guys out there, Piper probably would draw more than uh, most, just because he was really a huge name in his day. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, Piper did draw over a thousand. That's true. Uh, will Doug Dillinger keep his job as head of security? I would guess not. Why not? Um, uh, I just they got to have a head not. of security. Yeah, I just guess not. I think they would maybe be looking for a younger guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, if Time Warner wants to get out of the guaranteed contracts, couldn't they assign them to McMahon? <laughs> McMahon doesn't want them. That's the problem. They could. I'm sure that they want. I'm sure they want. They want badly to give them to McMahon, 
But he didn't want them, so that's the basic gist of it. Uh, is it true that WCW moved to TNN at 11 p.m.? Will that not affect Kill Wrestling as we know it? And wrestling as we know it is changing greatly. Kill is too strong of a word, but it's going to change. Uh, let's see. Does the new ownership have any interest in DDP? Uh, they have interest in DDP, yes. Even if built up for six months to a year, do you see anyone other than Booker T, who's, a, who's more of a mid-carder and could be taken seriously as a promotional pay-per-view? Um, if built up yeah. for a year... What's his question? Is there anybody that could headline like an interpromotional pay per view? Yeah, other than Booker T. You gotta look, at, get. look at all the guys that went from WCW to WWF and became huge. There were a lot of them. You mean like Austin and people like Austin oh, yeah. and Helmsley? I'm sure and, there's uh, some guys but, over there that uh, they could be something in a year. Headline a pay per view? I mean, the guys that they're the most excited about are like Helms and Kidman, and I don't know that they'll ever be main eventers on a pay per view. Well, if it's built up for a year and they send someone from the WWF over right now, in a year there'll be a WCW guy ready to headline a pay-per-view. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Let's let's go. We'll go to Ed in Texas. Ed, what's going on? Uh, Dave, I want to ask, what's going to happen with WCW worldwide? I think it's got about a week or two to go, and 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 then that'll be it. Originally, this the show that was taped this week, which I think would air this coming Saturday was originally supposed to be the last show, and I think that they actually called it like it was the last show, and then when it was over, they were going like, hey, let's do two more. So I think they may, either next week, within the next three weeks, it'll be over. But I'm so not sure. So the WWF, is he going to be able to pick up their time spots on all the syndications? I guess if they want to and they want to pay for them, they can, but I don't think that they're going to bother. Don't count on it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's show like worldwide that nobody really watches. Mm. Okay. Well, also I wanted to ask that the guys who are on like um, on um, like uh, Luger and and Buff and Steiner, did they show up today? Do you know? If they're supposed to, I haven't. I think I, I think if they're supposed to, that they're all there. Okay. I'm sure Flair, if they want Flair, Flair ain't gonna no show. I mean Luger. No, who is? I mean it's like anyone who thinks they're on the bubble, they're not gonna no show tonight. Yeah, There's but no if we way. still agreed, you would think that anyone who thinks they're on the bubble isn't gonna go into business for themselves. But uh, they that they was did. a very Poor ch choice of, of things to do, and and and, and don't like a Rick think. Steiner last Monday. That was a very poor choice of things to do. The only you know the only th reason why that might not kill him is because the WWF probably doesn't have a big interest in Conan. Like if he had done that to like say like Chavo Guerrero or Shane Helms or Billy Kidman, you know he'd have no prayer. I mean, he probably still, still has no prayer. Of unprofessionalism, you know. No, it's totally unprofessional. Doesn't matter if who you. If they want to clean up the locker room, they need to get rid of guys like that that are going to go into business for themselves. Oh, and they will. They will. I, 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 that's the one thing. There will, there may be guys that go into business for themselves on Nitro, but nobody will ever do it a second time. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, and also, uh, I wanted to ask, uh, what is the reality of the 24-hour uh, wrestling channel? How, how could that really happen? It could happen, but both Vince and Linda McMahon have said that they have no plans to do so any time in the future, you know, near future. Oh. But I mean, some five years down the line, if wrestling gets super popular. Um, I mean, I don't, you know, they got enough tape, it's a possibility, but it's not like in the imminent plans. I think it's a, g a good idea because, I mean, I would probably end up watching two to three hours every day of some, some of it, you know. And I'm sure mm -hmm. most fans would end up watching a couple hours at least a day. You know, you may be right, but at the same time, programming. it's cheap program. but the negative, the negative is, is that when you can see so much of it every week, it may dilute the ratings for the shows that they really want you to see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of ways of looking at it. I mean, t too much product isn't necessarily uh, good in the long run for the business. But you also got to look at how some of those, you know, those high-profile golf tournaments do, despite the fact that they have the golf channel. True. It'd be first run, um, you know, the important shows would be first run programming, and I think that those would always do okay, even if there were, like, you know, the classic wrestling channel. Yeah, but don't, even, even we never, we didn't have a 24-hour wrestling channel this last year. But one of the reasons that I think that, that these companies folded was because we had primetime wrestling every night of the week, and, and, and it ceased to become something special. Yeah. But it was first run. Yeah, I know. But but it was too much. Yeah. So, I you know, I mean... I, I mean, a classic I, I, wrestling channel, I'm just looking at it as, you know, this would not be first run programming. It'd be just like, yeah. uh, you know, the classic it's, movie network or classic anything network. You know, so you that's know, not hurting, like, modern shows. First you're right. Programming. You're right. You know that the key, the key really is is that, and, and 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 I don't have an answer, and no one really does until it's tried. You know, there's a theory that wrestling fans, that a very small percentage of wrestling fans are actually interested in old wrestling, 
and they're only interested in my, modern wrestling. And if it's out there, and that's the case, and they're not interested in history, like sports fans generally have more interest in, in um, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. In history of sports than wrestling fans. And if that's the case, then historical wrestling matches, you know, in, in, in a business that, except for people like us, really has no history, um, that may not have a great appeal. But it's like something we've talked about before, that there's a reason that uh, modern fans don't care about history. It's because they've been taught not to care about history. And if right. it's out there for them to watch, I mean, they may they may be huge for it. And you know what? It, again, you know what it is? It depends on how it's presented and how it's tied together. Mm-hmm. If it's tied together well, it, it it's viable. I mean, it, it you know, it's viable. Um, you know, they have it in Japan. So, yeah. you know, why, why couldn't they have it here? I think they may have one in Germany, too, but I'm not sure. Okay, and one final question that I have is: uh, Is Hector Guerrero going to be doing the googly, the googly gooker at WrestleMania? Possible. He was the original one. I don't know for sure though. That I got to see the gobble. That's a big costume to fill. <laughs> they can't be there. They may not have the gobbledygook. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys. Alex. Thanks a lot. Okay, very welcome, Ed. Let's go to Alex in Ottawa. Alex. How's doing? Hey. Hey, we're doing pretty good. I got a quick. I, I got a little bit of a comment here. Um, Jason Jett, I think he's a great worker and all, but uh, I don't know His if he's horrible. Yeah, I, does that guy have not the worst tights in the world? Like his uh, ring attire, um, does it not disgust you, or is it just me? Because, <laughs> like, not as good as the bottle it's, it's like this, I've seen anything that ugly. It's like this guy who doesn't really have a good body wearing a stripper outfit. <laughs> yeah. I know, I used to, like... A lot of when, people when he, share that uh, thought, by the way. Remember when he was working in ECW? I used to think the same thing. It was like, you know, let's like... With the tights were, or the shorts were too small with the money hanging out of it? Yeah, and oh, they yeah. fall off. Yeah. I could not look past that that outfit. I mean, people would always go, man, that Jason Jet's pretty good, or that uh, Easy Money's pretty good, and I could not look past that outfit. Unfortunately, I think a lot of people can't. I think that maybe one of the first things that happens when they sign him is they're going to, they're gonna like, send him an outfit rather than him coming up with one of his own. <laughs> Well, okay, well, my real question was, uh, I'm sorry, uh, my real question is about the WWF, WCW, uh, uh, possible angle they're gonna do soon. Um, is one federation eventually gonna take over the other? Is that what's gonna happen if they go against each other? There's nothing, like, there's no long-term plans, but eventually, yeah, I think that's, that's just gonna happen. happen. So yeah, that's how it always ends up. It. That's how it always has ended up in the past. Okay. Um, I don't see any reason why it would be different now. Okay, okay. I just wanted to know what, uh, people would be, uh, since uh, everything pretty much on North American TV is going to be WWF, uh, Vince McMahon style programming, there's more people going to be interested in J- New Japan stuff or maybe even Lucha Libre. Uh, not a whole group. I, I, I mean, there might be a little bit more, but I don't think it's going to be any great shakes unless they were to get on. I mean, Lucha Libre is on TV. I mean, for me, I'll tell you what. I will be watching. I think Brian, too. We will be watching more Lucha Libre in the next year. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I can tell you that. That's just how it's going to wind up. Um, New Japan, you know, I always watch New Japan anyway, but it's not on TV in this country, so until it is, I don't know that the that it's, it's really going to be anything more than a big cult thing of videotape collectors. Yeah. Well, I remember a couple of years ago they ran uh, uh, When Worlds Collide. I don't know if you remember that pay-per-view. Very oh, much. I don't think I'll ever forget collide. it. Yeah. Remember that? I don't that remember. That was like the, that was like the that. greatest pay-per-view. That one like Atlantis the, and... Uh... <laughs> oh... What are you doing, Brian? That's like the greatest pay-per-view, like, almost of all time, right up there in the top three or four. I couldn't believe the heat Eddie had on that one. Do you remember where he came out? Was, I think Los Amazes. I think the crowd was actually punching at him. It was just crazy. They were. Yeah. <laughs> Is that <laughs> normal? Like, that was the first the tape Grand, I got. It does it to the uh, Latino people. No, that was, that was our, yeah, when Art Bar was doing that back swim, that backstroke deal. <laughs> no, yeah. it was like pregnant women throwing stuff, throwing punches, and they were going back. It was just amazing. Uh, like yeah, that was, a, that was that was that was an amazing show. I'll tell you what. The first night they were at the uh, sports arena in L.A., which was about a year earlier, maybe a little over a year earlier. Um, the heat was like twice what it was that night. Although that night was that night was a super show too. I mean that that Santo Octagon against um, you know Love Machine and Eddie Guerrero match. That's one of the best matches of the decade, I think. Yeah, I'd agree with you. There. Uh, one last thing. Uh, wasn't K Dog uh, Max Moon? Uh, he was supposed to be, but uh, Max Moon was uh, Tom Boric. He was, oh, he was originally the guy who was supposed to be Max Moon. He may, he may have been Max Moon once or twice. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if he ever played it or not. But um, I thought he um, burned he his bridges to... with the WWF that week. By, uh, not sh- I think he, he abruptly left when they had this whole suit made for him. Or was that somebody else? No, they had the whole suit made for him, and he never showed up because he was such a big star in Mexico. And in hindsight, I bet he wishes he could take that back right about now. <laughs> because that's, that's going to be, you know, Vince doesn't forget. He didn't forget that. And... Uh, you know, that's that's what's happening right now. 
Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Okay, you're very welcome. Let's go to Jason. Jason, what's up? Not much. How are you gentlemen doing? Really good. Um, I, uh, I guess this is the night to talk about contracts, and I actually have a question um, about when Vince McMahon, um, didn't technically Vince McMahon breach Bret Hart's contract um, by not allow, allowing him creative control in the last 30 days of his contract? Yes. The technically, I would say he absolutely breached his contract, yes. Um, my, my question then is, why, why didn't Bret Hart um, sue him for that? Because there had to be a lot of uh, money involved in that uh, contract. Because then Vince McMahon could sue him back for punching him in the face. Yeah. Uh, they were kind of at a legal stalemate, both sides. Plus, can you imagine that whole thing in court? Well, I, I, I don't know, you know, and I, I don't know, but I would just think an assault charge for a punch is not going to be as much as that 20-year contract. Well, Vince was claiming all of a sudden he had double vision. He was going to, you know, I mean, what's Vince, Vince McMahon's vision worth? Oh, you know, I mean, yeah, I know, it, I know, he, I know. All of a sudden now we've never heard about double vision, but he'd have kept it at least until the trial. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Hey, the there, top line, McMahon, there's two. there would have been a permanent injury there if if if, if Hart would have filed a lawsuit. Huh. Wow. Okay. I, I guess I never thought of it like that. Yeah. Uh, what is uh? Is, do you think Eric Bischoff will um attempt to start up his own company um from scratch and try and? I build think that it? he would. I think he would love to. The key is, can he get television? But huh. but if he could get tele, if he could get strong enough television, absolutely he will. Or he'll, or I should say he'll try. If he can get the funding in the television, yeah, for sure he will. Um, and earlier in the show, you said that uh, he was gonna, or someone said that uh, he was gonna hire Cyrus, and you said that he had a lot of good ideas that, um, you know, did not obviously did not come to terms. Um, is, is it possible that you could share some of those ideas, or is that something that you? Would nah, because I'm quiet? trying to get the WWF to do them, and if I say them now, and, they're, they're, and it comes out they were Eric's ideas. Okay, I was yeah, Eric's that's, ideas. That's they were right. ideas that were. That that people had pitched to Eric, yeah, and then they were good ones. But that he was willing uh, to do. Yeah, I mean, but he would have been willing to do them. Okay. Well, hopefully, actually, maybe you know, hopefully, he can start his own company and, and do those things because uh, I, I just don't see how wrestling can stand for for what we're about to uh, suffer through. Yeah. Well, if if he can, I mean, the whole key is the TV. If he can get us, you know, like someone a strong network to pick something up, the talent's going to be there, and and he can, he'll start something up. And if they can and they're viable, you know, it's a whole new ball game, and uh, and it'll be good. It'll be it'll be, it'll be good for wrestling. But the TV, the, that TV barrier is so strong right now. I mean, the fact that he couldn't get the TV when he needed to, I mean, that was that was to me the, the the real the real news from last week was that, you know, here he had the chance to get the company, and the reason he didn't get it was because no TV station wanted it. Do you think um, come this late this summer um, that TV those TV spots might open up with the writer strike? Um, um, that would help, possibly. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I'm surprised that some of these networks were not more um, interested because of, for that very reason. Yeah. Because it is still first run programming; it still can draw ratings. The problem is the advertising community is looking very negative on wrestling, and that's that's the killer right now. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, gentlemen. You you guys have a good night. Okay. Thank you very much. We are totally out of time. I want to apologize to everyone whose phone calls we didn't get to. Um, and I will put the emails on the stack, and hopefully we can get some more. Then we will be here tomorrow at uh, 5 p.m., and uh, we'll be here all week. And I want to mention, mention also that uh, Wednesday we're going to have Jerry Lawler, and Thursday I think we're going to have the first long interview in pro wrestling of Brock Lesnar. So it's going to be a good week. We'll see you all tomorrow at 5.